Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I have another FAQ video for you. This one is gonna be about meal prepping. So for those of you who are new to my channel, I do a meal prep video every Sunday. It is my actual meal prep that I use for the entire week. I do work outside of the home 40 hours a week, plus I have you know other activities going on during the weekends. So for me, it's very important to make sure I have different components of my week all ready to go. For me, it's typically lunches and snacks and then different dinner components. So I get a ton of questions about meal prepping. Some of the questions I get just in general, I have some notes down here, so if I look down, that's what I'm doing. Um, some of the more popular questions I get is how long does it last in the refrigerator? What kind of containers do I use? Do I prefer glass or plastic containers? How do you get started with meal prepping? How long does meal prepping take? How do you figure out what you are meal prepping and how do you organize your time and how do you organize the meal prepping and stay on task? So I thought I would start with just some general tips that will answer a lot of those questions and then I will go into some of the specific questions um, after that. So first off, one thing it's really, really important to keep in mind is that meal prep is supposed to make your life easier. It's not supposed to stress you out more, not supposed to give you more anxiety. It's supposed to make your life easier. That's why I always say start slow. The very first time you do this, just start out with just a basic week, just one thing that you're prepping or one meal or you know that type of thing. Just start small, don't get yourself stressed out because like again, this is supposed to help you. So I just wanted to preface this with that. Just don't let it intimidate you. So some of the general tips and strategy, strategies I have for meal prepping, the first one, which is very, very important, is to make a plan. So way that I make my plan, which I think some people do it differently, but the way I make my meal prep plan is I first take my meal plan itself. So I figure out what I'm gonna make for the week, I do my grocery shopping, and then I come home, and usually the first thing I do Saturday night is I sit down and I real, figure out what I'm gonna meal prep for the week. Some of the things I take in consideration when I figure out what I'm gonna meal prep is my daily schedule for the week. So are there anything going on, you know, any activities going on after work that's gonna make me come home late, so I need to think about that. Um, or is it just a normal work week where I'm just gonna get home by, you know, a little bit after five and I can start dinner. Um, that kind of thing. So to look at your weekly schedule, especially if you have, you know, kids that are in sports, that kind of thing. So take that in consideration. And then that's when I figure out, okay, is it, and then I look at my, my meals. So since I am in probably the advanced stages of meal prepping, I prep everything. If you are just starting out, I, like I said, I seriously like recommend starting out with something small. So if for you, if you also work outside the home, so it's very important for you to get meals on the, on the table fast, then I would suggest doing some dinner prepping. So either, and you don't have to prep whole entire meals. That's another thing. You don't have to prep whole entire meals. You can just do components of meals. So look at what's important to you. Is it, you know, do you have to pack your lunch like I do? So is it important to make sure you have healthy lunches? So do a lunch meal prep and then that's all you do. So you just, you know, make your plan about how I do it. So if, once you really start getting into the meal prepping, the way I do it is I look at it and like, okay, what snacks am, gonna, am I going to have? And I've tried, I've tried to simplify it over the last few months because I would get really, way too intense about meal prepping and I would just end up with so much. So now I kind of narrow it down. It's like, do I want veggies and dip this week? Do I just want to do yogurt? Do I just want to do applesauce? So I just kind of look at what I'm going to do. So almost always it contains some sort of basic prepping, which usually contains like, you know, doing some veggies that I can have for snacks chopping up veggies for salads because I like to have salads every day, but it's so tedious to sit there and chop up your onions and your cucumbers and your, you know, everything just to put into a, a salad every night at dinner time. So I always do like what I call a basic prep and that is prepping up like any onions I made need for meals for the week. Onions that I want for salads, so green onions, red onions, I chop up cucumbers, I chop up um, different lettuces if I you know have you know the ones that aren't in already in containers 
Um, just, you know, I just look at it. I don't clean any fruit. So if I have any grapes, I like to clean that. If I have some apples, I like to wash those up. That way everything is ready to go and it's grab and go. Um, so that's what I do is I, or I figure out my meal prep plan. I always make a plan and I, for me, it's best to separate out in sections. And the reason why I do that is if for some reason I cannot get to something, then at least I can figure out by looking at the sections, okay, what's more important for me to get done for sure this week or what can I maybe do later in the week? Another reason why I put it in sections is it helps me kind of figure out what I should start with first because if, say, in my dinner section, if I need to cook rice for the week, then I probably will start that start with that first. So I kind of look at what I need to do and it's easier if I have it separated. So I separate mine into like a basic snack prep section a lunch section and then I do dinner so that's how I separate mine and I just put I just look at my meal plan and I put the things in there that I need to do and that's how I make my plan so you know it's just really important that if you want to start small decide first though what you want to start with so that's what I was saying if you decide you want to do just a lunch then just do a lunch don't feel like you need to do everything also, depending on how much time you have, you can set yourself a time limit. I try to always set myself a time limit. I never want to try to take more than two hours for prepping. Now, since I do film, I do allow myself about 30 minutes extra, however long I'm giving myself. So if I'm saying I'm going to take an hour, it's actually an hour and a half because I do have to move the camera around. I do, you know, it gets in the way sometimes. So it's a little bit more cumbersome but the actual like prepping of the food is an hour and that is not counting cleanup time all the time. A lot of times I try to do it with that, but it does not always include the cleanup time, but cleanup time honestly is usually only about 15, 20 minutes. So if you set yourself a time limit, then when you're just starting out, it doesn't feel as, you know, just you don't get as stressed about it and it's not, you don't get as anxious about it because if you're setting that time limit, but it does also force you to be strategic about the things that you are prepping. So just, like I said, just set that time limit. I always have some kind of entertainment around me. It, it just makes it go faster if I have a movie playing or a podcast going or music on. Um, or if your family's in here, you can talk to them. But for me, it just, it's it's nice just to have some kind of, you know, an audio book if you listen to audio books, but just some kind of entertainment or distraction also kind of takes away from that time that you're, you know, any kind of like, if it makes it feel like you're taking a long time. Um, one of my second strategies, which I think is one of the most important ones as well, and that is to start with a clean kitchen that it is the worst trying to meal prep when your dishwasher has dishes clean dishes in it especially if there's you know hasn't been emptied if your sink is full of dishes if your garbage is full if your refrigerator is not cleaned out it is so important to start with a nice clean kitchen so i always make sure all my countertops are cleaned off my dishwasher is emptied any dishes that need to go into the dishwasher i put them in there I, I empty out my trash can and then I always, always, the next thing after that is I pull everything out that I need. And this is including the containers. I've showed this in some of my meal prep videos before. I lay out on my table usually is where I lay out all of my containers that I think I'm gonna need. Sometimes I even mark the containers on my meal prep plan. I'll kind of mark what containers I'm thinking. But a lot of times I just pull quite a few of my containers out, just put them on my table. That way they're here and I don't have to bend. Because for me, all my meal prep containers are in a cupboard where I have to kind of bend down and get into. So if I just pull, you know, a few of what I think I'm gonna need, just a general idea, I just pull them all out, put them on my table. On my countertop, I pull out everything. I pull out my produce, I pull out any meats I need to marinate, I pull out um, any grains I need and I just have everything there on the counter again so it's there you don't have to go into like for me I have a pantry in my kitchen a pantry in my garage I don't have to go out there and grab it I don't have to go in the refrigerator I don't have to go in one freezer and the other freezer it's just all right there so that's another thing you want to start with also one of the things you want to have is what I call just a trash bowl which I think it's like a cooking technique came from Rachel Ray one of the um, you know celebrity chefs and I always have it on my counter, always. If you guys watch any of my meal prep videos, you see I always have a bowl on my counter that I am throwing like peels in or you know that kind of thing as I'm peeling carrots or onions or whatnot. 
I, I just throw everything in there. That way it is close by. Or you can put your trash can next to you or something, but I tend to trip over it because I'm really clumsy. So for me, having it on the counter is much more um, practical for me. And then another thing is, again, I'm just gonna touch on, you don't have to prep full meals. You can just do like, say you just chop up some veggies for dinner. So that's one thing that I do. So if I need, if I'm making a soup and it's calling for carrots and celery and onion, I don't want to chop all that at five o'clock when I get home from work, especially when I try to strive to get dinner on the table by six o'clock. I, I want to have everything ready. So <clears throat> I prep all my vegetables that I need for anything. I prep any, um, like grain, so if I was calling for any rice, I do rice, quinoa, lentils, I cook all that stuff that I may need for dinners. So that way when I need to do dinner, it's literally like maybe browning up some ground meat or um, putting your chicken in the oven or the air fryer, that kind of thing. I also marinate my chicken, and then that kind of goes along with the meal plan, meal prepping as well. I try to plan my meal plan, so what I'm gonna have for the week, around my meal prepping too. So if I know I'm gonna have some kind of grilled chicken through the week, and I just figure, okay, you know what, I just wanna get the marinating and stuff done out of the way, so I'm gonna have that either Sunday night or Monday night. That way I know I wanna use it up within like two days. I always try to use my any raw meat I have in there within two days in my refrigerator, so I try to plan that out. Now you can marinate your chicken and put it into the freezer, which I've done that before as well. But for me, the marinating the chicken, I sometimes I'll just do that before I leave for work, put it in the refrigerator, just do it when I get home. So that's not as big of a thing. Um, meatballs, meatloaf, I make meatloaf quite often for my family. I will just make that up, either put it into the freezer, or like I said, I, if I make it on a Sunday, I either plan to have it Sunday night or Monday night. That way it's ready. Meatballs, the same way. I just make them all, get them ready, either put them in the freezer, or again, just plan to have them within a couple of days. Um, but so you don't have to do full meals. You can just do different components of meals that just makes your life easier through the week. Usually the only full meals I do are lunches and that is just because that is a priority to me is to make sure I have healthy lunches. It is way too easy in my job to get food there at my work or to just go out to lunch with somebody because I work with a lot of people. So it's really easy just to say, you know what, hey, you wanna go get lunch? That's way too easy. So I need to make sure I have something, you know, in my back pocket to be able to just go grab out of the refrigerator and go where it's just complete. So for me, healthy lunches, meals, you know, full meals are important to me. That's why you will see that all the time in my meal prep videos. And the next tip I have for you is batch cooking. I cannot tell you how much easier this can make your life. And again, the batch cooking, what I'm talking about is like soups or stews or cooking a whole chicken or cooking like up some beans and your rice and your quinoa. Here's the thing about batch cooking and another thing also through the week you can do it. I'll tell you how you can do that. So with soups, you can so easily double a soup recipe. While you're already making it, especially if you're making in your crock pot or your instant pot or something, you can so easily double that recipe, have half of it for your meal for the week and then put the other half in the freezer. There you go, you have a freezer meal ready to go. I used to put soup like in mason jars, they work wonderful. Or if you need to save room, put soup in gallon sized bags and either use a food saver to, you know, suck the air out or you can just flatten it and then you just freeze it flat on a cookie sheet and then so I'd like to take a gallon size bag put your soup in there and this also works good for chilies and stews and that kind of thing lay them flat on a like a baking sheet and then put that in the freezer let it freeze and then you can store them upright kind of like in look like a bookshelf that's what I used to do when I made a lot of those types of things you can do that with beans um, also though, through the week, here is a way that is so easy to make yourself a second meal. So when you're making something like a casserole, a lasagna, again, soups or stews, double the recipe. I know I used to, when I used to make lasagna all the time, I would make two of them. I would make one for the dinner that night because while I'm making it, you know, lasagna can be kind of cumbersome sometimes. So just make two of them. And a lot of times I would just buy those foil like disposable pans when I know I was gonna make more than one and I would just make one of those in there, wrap it up in foil, put it into the freezer. You can do that again like with meatloaf. I almost never make only one meatloaf. I make two when I'm making it because a lot of times it's cheaper anyway to get your, your ground meat in a larger package. It's cheaper so you can make 
while you're there, just go ahead and make up the meatloaf. Meatballs, um, what are some other things? Just any kind of casseroles, just double the recipe and just plan for that when you are making your meal plan and then you have one in the freezer. So that is another way to meal prep without meal prepping. It's just, it's doing it through the week. So at the last item before I dive into the other questions is multitasking. So look at the things that you have in your kitchen to use. All your, so what I'm talking about, like for me personally, I have my oven, my stovetop, air fryer, I have like a pressure cooker, instant pot type thing, and then my slow cooker. It is not unusual for me to have all of those items going at one time. Now, I'm a natural multitasker, a lot of people are not, but I guarantee you can work your way up to that doing meal prepping once you dive in and you're doing it all the time. So what, like, here's an example, like say you have some rice or quinoa or something like that that you wanna cook or some beans. You can put those into your pressure cooker instant pot. Um, at the same time, so I'll have something like that going at the same time, I can have like my hard, bo hard boiled eggs on the stove. Now I love to make hard boiled eggs in my Instant Pot, but for me, since I'm really the only one that eats them, it's not, I only have a few to do, so I don't wanna take up that whole entire Instant Pot for some hard boiled eggs, so I have those on the stove top. So I have that going, my eggs going. In the oven, I may have some egg muffin cups or I have them roasting up some veggies. So I have that in there and then I'm chopping vegetables at the same time. I may have some stuff in the air fryer going like another, some more veggies or you know, if I'm doing some grilled chicken, I may have that in there. Again, I'm chopping on the countertop at the same time while all of that is going. So it is so easy to just prioritize everything and also just prioritize your time as well by that helps you prioritize your time because you know that you know this that your rice is going to take the longest so get that in there it's out of your sight out of your mind while you're chopping some veggies you have your eggs going i mean everything is right there at least in my my kitchen's small so i can just be right there and have my hand on everything so definitely multitasking is very important use all the resources you have in your kitchen so i think one of the biggest questions I get besides just any tips or strategies is how long does the food last? How do I store the food? So here's the simple answer to that for me. Well, for one thing, here's here's a general answer. One thing, don't go overboard. Most food, especially cooked food, is not gonna last in the refrigerator more than three or four days. So if you are meal prepping on a Sunday, try to make sure everything you're using up, you use up by like Wednesday or Thursday if it's a cooked food. For me, the way I do it is I plan out, again, what I'm gonna be eating for dinners and for lunches. So for me, for my lunches, so with a lot of people asking specifically about my meal preps for my lunches, I will usually put those into the freezer depending on what they are. Now, if I do need those like protein snack boxes, of course, those just go into the refrigerator because usually those have crackers or eggs or you know that kind of thing. And I try to eat those within the first couple days. But for like this last week, I prepped um, hash brown quiche and stuffed peppers. I just put those, I kept out one that I knew I was gonna have for lunch on Monday, and the rest of them I put them in the freezer. Then what I do is I pull them out of the freezer, put them into the refrigerator the night before when I know I'm gonna have that. And then that way, if I don't have it, it hasn't gone to waste, it's in the freezer, so it's always there that you can pull out at any time. And that's why I buy containers that are freezer safe. It's really important to me. I'll dive into the containers in just a second. So um, so that's one thing. As far as like the um, fruits and vegetables, I always put those in plastic bags, and so those seeds will stay good all throughout the entire week. Um, cucumbers, I get a lot of questions on my cucumbers. How do you keep them from getting you know slimy and yucky? Glass containers. I, I, as, as long, and when I used to put everything in plastic containers, yes, I had the same issue. Since I started using glass containers, all my fruits and vegetables stay so, so fresh. They even stay fresher than I had gotten those fresh containers that I don't remember what they were called, the Rubbermaid made. They have like the venting thing at the bottom. Those keep okay, but my glass containers keep them so much fresher. So again, that goes right to the other question is, what kind of containers do I use, glass or plastic? I always have all my containers listed in the description box. I have bought all my plastic containers from Amazon. I have never, ever had an issue with them. I've had to throw one lid away and that was only because it had flew into the bottom of my dishwasher and got next to the dryer vent, the dryer element, and it, and it melted it. That was the only time 
Other than that, none of them have cracks, none of them, and they've been in the freezer and never. Now I have got put in Rubbermaid, like the regular Rubbermaid plastic containers in the freezer and they've dropped out of the freezer and fell down and shattered when they've been frozen. These ones have fallen, not broken, nothing. There's not one flaw in them. So I highly recommend them. I will only recommend anything that I like as far as my Amazon page. I use Amazon a lot because I live in a very rural area where we don't have Target, we don't have malls, we don't have, we have Walmart and that's pretty much it. So I do a lot of purchasing on Amazon, but I will never ever like give you guys a link to anything that I have not bought myself or recommend. So any of those meal prep containers, I love. Um, I buy the little, oh, and then the glass ones though, I buy at Costco. Pretty much any glass container you see that I have, I bought in at Costco. And I believe the snapware ones, the ones that you, I get a ton of questions about are the ones that have the snap lids. Those ones I still see there and they are amazing. I have never ever had any issues with those. They all still snap and seal really well. Um, I love them, so highly recommend those as well. So I hope that answered all of the questions that I get. If not, please leave one down in the comment section and we can talk down there. I wanna end this video with just a few more tips and these are gonna be more of don'ts. This is what you don't wanna do when you're first starting out with meal prepping or even don't wanna do in general when it comes to meal prepping. So I have my notes here of my don'ts. So for one thing, don't try to prep an entire week's worth of food, especially when you're just starting out because you'll end up just throwing stuff away. That's what happened with me. That's why I do try to just, if you notice, I try to only do three or four days of lunches because logically I may go out to lunch one day with a friend or I may not feel like something like that, but I do throw mine in the freezer so they do keep. But don't, don't tell yourself this is what I'm gonna eat seven days a week for my breakfast, lunch, snacks, and prep it all because you don't want to, you don't want to end up wasting food. So don't, don't start out that way unless you know you're going to do it. But I just would highly recommend don't prep an entire week's worth of food on meal prep day. Don't go in without a plan. Don't just say, I'm just going to wing it. I can do this. Don't do that. Because like I said, even me who's been doing it for years and years and years, I still go in with a plan. So don't go into meal prepping without a plan. So another one is don't go into your meal prepping day with all new recipes. You'll be in the kitchen all day. You'll be stressed out because it's a recipe you're not familiar with. You're having to look at it. So go into it with foods that you know you love. Maybe try one new recipe each week. That way you get into the habit of meal prepping, but don't try to go into it with all new recipes. And also don't plan for it as an all day event when you're first starting out. I, I know a lot of people do all day meal prepping, but I guarantee they've probably done it for a long time. So when you're first starting out, don't plan for an all day, all day meal prepping. I recommend no longer than two hours on your first time trying this and your first, you know, as you, until you really get yourself into it. But even now I still don't do all day meal prepping. I two hours, maybe three hours is the max that I ever could consider doing. I just, I don't want to start disliking it. I don't want to start feeling like a chore. And this one kind of goes along with what I already, kind of one of the other tips I gave you, and that's don't start prepping before you check your kitchen. So that's making sure you have everything that you need to do your meal prepping. So you have, you know, you did your groceries and you have the right containers, you have your Ziploc bags, that kind of thing. Also, don't start before you have everything ready. So it kind of like goes along with where I say I pull everything out. That even means having your, if you're gonna be watching your Netflix or listen to your podcast, have everything there ready to go before you start. Because once you venture out of the kitchen, sometimes it's hard to get right back into the kitchen and get going. And then the last thing, again, it kind of goes along with some another tip, just don't, don't leave your kitchen without cleaning up first. Because again, if you, you need to plan the cleanup along with it. Now I try to clean up a little bit as I go along, but like again, I sometimes it's hard to do that, so I just don't stress about it because I know as soon as I get done meal prepping, I'm gonna clean up the kitchen right away. That way I don't walk away and then I come back in and it's like, oh, I still gotta clean up. Why do I do this meal prepping thing? Don't do that. Make sure you do a cleanup before and after your meal prepping. I wanna end this with how I started it. 
Just remember that meal prepping is supposed to make your life easier, not stress you out. So just kind of take any of these tips that I give you and just make yourself a plan and start small and start simple. I think you will find that meal prepping is going to be part of your regular schedule and you will love it more than you probably already hate it right now. So again, if you have any other questions, please let me know down in the comment section and I will answer those. And I hope this video was helpful and I hope it answered a lot of the questions that I get all the time. Again, make sure you check out the description box because I will have all the containers I use, all the tools that I use. Again, everything's been pretty much purchased off of Amazon, so all of that will be down there. And I will have my meal prep playlist as well so you can check out any of those videos if you have not done so already. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye, guys. I, there's a light inside your eyes. You make me feel like I'm awake. I don't know why you make me shine like a star